Okay, so far so good. So we've looked so far at how rotation take place in the forearm. Here we go, I'm showing it again. Yeah. And now I want to show you how uh, another simple joint can also be very, very different amongst people. So I call this the, the forearm or the radius joint. This is the ulnar or elbow joint. And in my model here, if I flex at the elbow and then extend, you can see that for this model, it cannot get all the way straight. You see there's an angle here between uh, the uh, humerus bone and the ulna bone, uh, which is at the elbow. If I go in close enough, yeah, you can see that the ulna bone, as the elbow flexes, and this model in this cast is, is taken from, uh, I guess, an orig um, some original uh, human bones. The ulna bone hits the humerus bone, and I can't get the arm straight. This is a perfect example of compression. Now, of course, these bones have no muscles, so it can't have any tension. You can see this in the living body, in my living body. So this is my humerus bone. This is my own bone here, right where my elbow is. And if I slowly extend, eventually, I can get a little bit further than the model. I can get to almost perfectly straight. But then I can feel I can't go any further. And with this example, I can give you a little bit more information and understanding to how you can identify tension and compression. If I was tight, if I was stiff, then what would be stopping me from doing this would be the biceps and coracobrachialis and some of the other muscles here right in the top of, on top of my humerus bone. And as I try to extend my elbow, these would stop me because they'd be tight and I'd feel tension here. So tension is always on the side that you're moving away from, my hands moving away from the biceps and the other muscles on the top of my arm here. Compression on the converse happens on this other side, on the side that you're moving towards, that the moving bone is moving towards. So as I move and I try and go further, eventually I start to feel a slight pinching here in my elbow. And that's how I identify if it's compression. So for me, I can get my arm pretty much straight and I begin to feel a pinching here. Now let's see what Josephine's got. Let's have a look at her arm. Over she comes. See if we can fit both of us in this, in this frame here. Yeah, she sits facing me. Yeah, you sit facing me, so turn around. Okay, and then she gives us, can you give us your right arm? Yeah, and can you peel your uh, sleeve back so that we can see as much as we can? Okay, so can you flex your, at the elbow as much as you can? Okay, there we go. So this is Josephine in flexion at the ulna joint. And you can actually see her ulna bone sticking out of her uh, arm here. This is her humerus bone. And then slowly for dramatic effect, let's see, can you go halfway towards straightening your arm? So da 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 Okay, that's halfway, you can see. And then she keeps going, la 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 la. That's a little bit more. That's to where I got to pretty much straight. But I know that Josephine can go further. So off she goes. Oh my God, she's gone way past, that would be 180 degrees about there. Josephine's gone another, shall we call it, 30, 40 degrees past there. And if I push on Josephine's arm this way, we can ask her where she feels it. Where do you feel if I push aggressively here? There you go. She's feeling a pinching on the underside of her elbow. And she can't go any further. If I said, Josephine, let me open your elbows a little bit more, she would make a face, but she would go, yeah, she's making a face at me. That means she doesn't like that very much. So Josephine doesn't have any tension in her biceps. And she does have the ability with her shape of bones to go way past, way past 180. So that's Josephine. Can you drop your arm for a moment? 
Yeah, and that's me. I can get to pretty much exactly straight. Okay, if I show you the movement again, la 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 la, I get to here. I don't feel any tension in my biceps. But if I try and go any further, if I try and force it, I feel quite a strong sensation on the underside of my elbow. That's compression. Thank you. So there are two reasons why somebody can't move tension and compression. That's number one. Number two, we are all different. You can't see this when you're coming in, when a student comes into a yoga class. And tension can be worked through uh, over time. Like you go to yoga classes and you stretch. Uh, but you don't know before you practice, unless you've x-rayed yourself, uh, uh, what you're going to be able to do. And this is, you know, the underlying uh, kind of message here for this whole lecture is that this has huge implications for how people are going to look. The example we've just given here of extension at the ulnar joint is a very impassioned one in yoga. Uh, because we talk about things like hyperextension and going past uh, 180 degrees being bad. Well, I lived most of my life in Asia, and I can tell you that 90% of the class have exactly what uh, Josephine has in their arm. Very few of them, if any, have ever injured their elbow because they go past the sacred 180 degrees. That's a, that's a kind of a, a random... Um, arbitrary uh, place that we said this is good, anything past 180 is bad. But there are some people I've met who that's all they can get to, just like the whoever body, whichever body was given this. This person can only get to um, this amount and they will never be able to straighten their arms. That's all they've got and it's not because of tension. Okay, so we've looked at the radial joint or the forearm joint. We've looked at the ulna joint. Let's look at the humerus joint uh, in the body, which most of us will call the shoulder. And uh, I will, I'm just gonna call it the humerus joint because the shoulder is a fairly complex thing and we can get uh, confused. So to show you this, I wanna show you um, Josephine and my uh, range of motion in the shoulder or in the humerus joint. Let's show uh, me first. So we're going to step on to the yoga mat and Josephine's going to come over here and help me. If we can fit both of us on. Yeah, can you step back slightly? Okay, so I'm going to raise my arms over my head like this, but I know that that goes out of frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Josephine's hands on down like this. And I'm slowly going to step back. And I'm just going to slowly go down. And what I'm doing here, if I, if I repeat that, what I'm doing here, so I'm doing this, but I'm bending at the hips as well. So you can see how much range of motion I have at my shoulder joint. So I'm going to place my palms here and off we go. I go down and I've been doing yoga, you know, at least a decade and longer with other stuff. And I don't have any tension in my shoulders. And one of the big reasons I got into yoga was tension in my body. But that's as far as I can go. You can sit down for a moment. I think you can see from that demonstration that I couldn't get my whole body all the way straight, like from my hips to my uh, hands, there's a kind of a, a slight angle like this. If I show you from a little bit closer up now in my own body, I begin to raise my right humerus bone. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I get to about here. And then I feel that I can't go any further at all. Now, most yoga teachers, most people in movement would say, ah, you're tight in your shoulders, Google. You need to open up your shoulders. 
And I fought that for many, many, many years. I thought there was something I wasn't doing, I wasn't strong enough. And then I learned about variable anatomy and I realized, no, the shape of my bones don't allow me to go any further and I'm hitting compression in my shoulder. So let's test our model. I go up, 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 and this is called flexion at the humerus joint. And I get to here. Now, let's test our model. Tension happens on the side that you're moving away from. So I'm moving away from my body. And as I go up, so tension would be on this side of my body. And I don't feel anything here, like a tight hamstring or a tight tricep in this case. I don't feel anything here. What I do feel is a very strong pinching right here where a humerus bone hits my, um, uh, my scapula bone, and which is the other bone of the shoulder, one of the other bones of the shoulder. I feel it right in deep in here, here to be specific. So I get, I flex, 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 and I get to about here. I can't go up to 180 degrees. If I want to go further, I have to begin to lean back, and now I can get my arm straight. So just like earlier, uh, if you remember, I said if you cannot do everything at the forearm, you'd have to internally rotate at the humerus bone. Here, I cannot get my arm all the way up, so I need to back bend using my spine to get my arm straight. If you can't do it in one place, you will do it in another place. Now let's look at Josephine in this shape. So we're gonna go retreat back over there to the yoga mat. And again, we're gonna face each other. And just to show you, can you step back slightly? So just to show you again me, so I place my palms down on her palms, and I step back just to show you again, maybe to turn your eye. Can you see that the angle along my body goes up to my shoulders and then goes down again? I can't get all the way from my hips to my hands all the way straight. Now, if we compare this to Josephine, and I repeat this with her, and I've prepared this, I know that she, uh, she can get something very different. Off she goes, she begins to walk back, and then she completely relaxes. Yeah, wow, there you go. How does that feel as a stretch? Yeah, in the arms, armpits. Ah, in the arms and the armpits. If you really relax, ah, can you see how her hands are now above her hips? Thank you, Josephine. Slowly come out. So if we say um, that there's a straight line uh, from, her from her hips to her hands, she goes past 180. Let me show you again. So she places her hands on my hands. And let's do it slowly, slowly. So off she goes. I got to about there. That's how my body looks. And then Josephine can go a little bit more. That's straight. But she can go even more. Ah, just relax. And all of that movement, if I can hold your hands there for like 30 seconds, all of that movement is happening right in this humerus joint here. And she says she feels a nice stretch along the underside of her arm. Do you feel anything on this side of the shoulder? No, she's shaking her head. Thank you very much. Breath for a moment. So again, thank you. You'll be back very quickly. So we're all very, very different. For me, yoga teacher, trainer, yogi of, of many years, I've tried and tried and tried very early, particularly very early on in my career, to open up my shoulder to make it uh, to make it. Uh, more open so I can get into downward facing dog and all the poses where my arms are over my head, never mind talking about handstand, pinchamayarasana, etc, etc, etc. Eventually I learned that no matter how hard I train, my body cannot go further. So my handstand is always going to, I'm going to always have to bend my back and look more like a banana. My forearm balances are the same. My downward dog is going to be the same. So if I show you my downward facing dog, not just looking at my, not looking at my legs, but just looking at my shoulders, you'll be able to see this is the case. 
I get to here and I feel a very, very strong pinching in my shoulders here. I cannot get my whole body straight. Now let's look at Josephine. If she comes and does, can you place your head uh, just at the bones and so turn around? Yeah. So if Josephine comes and does her downward facing bone, and again, we're not looking at her arms so much. Yeah, and off she goes. And then she really pushes her chest back towards her knees. And really gets into a nice stretch. You can bend your legs. It doesn't have to be about here. Yeah, and then really push your chest back. Ah, there you go. Can you see how she really, she's not getting quite as far as she did maybe before? You can see if you can push yourself a little bit more. I might kind of give her an assist. Yeah. You'll see yoga teachers doing this quite a lot. With Josephine, oh, yeah. There she goes. How does that feel? Mm. <laughs> it's strong. But she can do that. Actually, let's repeat that with me so you can rest. Can you come and do what I just did for, for you? So if Josephine tries to do that for me, if you go try and push me back, and I had many teachers try and do this. Uh, how did that feel when I did it with you? What do you think, Josie? Oh, here. It's yeah. Like, it's definitely extra. Extra? Did it feel nice? Mm, just a touch too much, maybe? Touch too much. It was a touch too aggressive. But for me, if you push me back towards my knees, uh, it feels horrible. All I feel is a massive pinching right here in my femur joint. Thank you very much. So, again, there are two reasons why we can and cannot move. Could be due to tension. And for many, many yoga people, right in the beginning, if they get their arms to here, they might feel like, oh, a huge stretch across their chest muscles, into their triceps, and into their shoulder. But it could be because of compression. No matter how hard you practice, that will never change. Compression is not bad. It's a, it's a part of life. Going too far is bad. And, you know, if we come back to our other lectures in, in this thing, what is yoga about? Is it about giving a Cirque du Soleil show? No. What it's about is getting chi flowing, stimulating your yin and yang tissues, no matter what it looks like. 